I'm going to talk about a tool that will let us see uh, what sites are tracking uh, us and how they are communicating with each other. Um, so uh, the tool is called Lightbeam and it is an add-on for Mozilla. Uh, one thing I want to say, uh, unless you know what you're doing, get your add-ons only directly through Mozilla, through Firefox. Uh, do not get them th from a third-party site uh, because there are things you need to do to verify that the, uh, that the software you're getting from the third-party site is actually the software you're wanting to get. So right now, um, as I say, unless you've learned enough to be certain what you're getting, what you're getting please get the, the add-ons only directly from uh, Mozilla. Now, uh, Lightbeam is, a, um, uh, is only JavaScript, so the nice thing about it is you don't have to worry about it loading something. You can actually load the add-on and start using it without having to restart uh, Firefox. Um, but you can also then delete the, remove the add-on, and it will delete all the data that is collected. Um, because when you see what is collecting, uh, what other sites are collecting, and you know then also that, that uh, Lightbeam is also collecting all that, uh, you might not be uh, want to keep that around. Um, so uh, one of the things is, uh, uh, let me go ahead and get to the slideshow. There we go. So Lightbeam is an interactive visualization for websites that are tracking you. Uh, it's tracking both sites that you have visited and also third-party sites. So these are other sites that are getting information about you that you didn't necessarily visit. I just brought up Google for a specific look. And we can look at Lightbeam. And we have one site that's got a cookie for us. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and look at a related site. So now we can see we have YouTube, which is also bringing up double click. And oh, there's double click again. Why Timge? See that we've got a connection to Google. So YouTube is also bringing up a Google cookie. And then Google static syndication. So YouTube is bringing up a couple more. But we can already see that we're getting a connection from the two sites where YouTube brought up a site that we previously pulled up. Yahoo. So Yahoo brings up a few more uh, cookies. Now I forgot to explain there at the beginning that the circles are the sites that we've looked at and the triangles are sites that we have not gone to. The triangles are third party sites. So we can see that Yahoo is connected to YouTube via the double click third party site. So now double click can potentially be tracking you on both sites and collating information. Now since we started with search engine, I figured we'd go look at a couple of other search engines and see how they're doing. Uh, so this is be, of course, our favorite search engine, <coughs> which we'd already kind of gone to since Yahoo is using them as an engine. But there we go. So Bing is connected to Facebook. And then uh, DuckDuckDuckGo, a favorite of a few people in the group, uh, one of which is not here tonight. And that is off by itself, not talking to anybody else. Oh, no. Yeah. So one of the things that DuckDuckGo talks about is the fact that they're not selling your data, they're not collecting your data, et cetera, et cetera. So that's not really a surprise for us. <coughs> now, let's go ahead and talk to you, look at what a couple of commercial entities do. Ticketmaster. Right here. Oh, that's Bing. Oh, Bing brought up Facebook in the end. There's something else. Oh, live.com. There are other things. There's Ticketmaster. Yes, it's got a large constellation of things. The, the next couple, uh, you're going to feel like you just took a, uh, infra, uh, a, uh, a black light out into the backyard looking for scorpions. Woo! So Newegg has got uh, quite the Oort cloud going there. Um, it's starting to look like a semantic web. Yes. So notice that, that Newegg is connecting to Yahoo, to Google, to YouTube, uh, directly it looks like. And then just to, you know, to be equal opportunity on the, uh, on the places that send you, uh, you know, more spam than receipt when you buy something from them. We'll go look at Tiger Direct. And which one is it? This one? Yeah, there we go. So they're getting up there as well. So quite a, quite a few things on there. So it's the places that are selling you things tend to have a lot of cookies and partners and connections to other places. 
Now, I mentioned that circles are places that you visited. Triangles are places that are third party. As you can see, we're getting to have quite a bit on the screen. And since I'm doing a demonstration, I need to clear that off so we can, can get uh, some other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and reset the data. And now I get a fresh, fresh green. So let's go ahead and look at new sites. And go over the light beam. Oh, they've got a pretty good cloud, too, going. And uh, so we've got the NPR. We end up with Facebook coming up here again. Uh, scorecard research, I'm certain, is in here somewhere. There's Google again. Oh, double click. Yeah, there is scorecard research. All right. And uh, now notice that CNN and NPR share a few things. So we chart beat, scorecard research. Not, not a surprise for us at this. And Emmer World, whatever that is. So MSNBC, let's see if they actually come up. There we are. And there they are, there they are. Oop, oh, oh, get stuff. All right. Oh, there's the connections. Yes. Wow. So we, it looked good to begin with, but as it finished loading. Yes. So we got all this stuff going in there. Again, we have scorecard research in the middle there, Facebook in the middle. So AZ Family, I figured I'd go for an Arizona site. And all right, this one is them, I believe. Yep, so they've got a lot of different things going on as well. And uh, just to show that we're equal opportunity for, uh, for things, this is a uh, Tucson paper. So there is on Daily Star down to Tucson. And they've got quite a close. But, you know, unlike the, unlike the Phoenix station, at least they put their logo in the cookie, I guess. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm not certain actually how, where Lightbeam's getting the different logos from. So I have okay, so we're done with the news. Let's move on to the fake news. So uh, there we go. Comedy Central is tracking a lot of different things about us. In fact, if you ever look at the JavaScript they've got going, they've also got JavaScript coming from dozens of different uh, places. And then... So now we know how Daily Show and Fox News connect. So Demdex, Immerworld, and Scorecard Research. So we thought it was just because uh, John Stewart and Bill O'Reilly go vacation together. So, all right. HBO. Oh, you can't even look at them without flash. So screw that. All right. So here's another problem with cookies. Flash has its own set of cookies that are kept separate from the, from the browser, and those are kept in a different location, and they're actually kind of a pain to deal with. You need a different set of plugins in order to, to track those. So if you're using Flash, then those cookies can be tracked by all kinds of different sites. Um, and there's a couple of other ways that they're doing more uh, advanced cookies nowadays that I will eventually do a presentation on once I've learned enough to actually talk about it properly. All right, so back to private browsing. So private browsing will still let them set all the cookies because it's not changing anything about what cookies are set. What's changing is what it saves on disk. So when you use private browsing and you quit that browser session, it will remove any of the cookies and any of the history that you've got so that it's not showing up on your computer, but it's still on their computer. So anything you've done, if you've logged in, they know exactly who you are. They've been tracking everything you've been doing. If they're using Flash, I'm betting private browsing does not delete that data. I'm betting that that data stays there and private browsing is not getting to the, to the super cookies that Flash uses. All right. And then just for uh, a little bit of completeness, we'll get a couple of sites that uh, we possibly or probably care about. Linux.com is coming up. Okay. Oh, there's HP. I do, one thing that I wish it had, okay, here we go. I wish I could right click or something on the, on the thing and say, just get rid of this node instead of having to clear them all out. Anyway, Linuxcom is, is talking to a few things. YouTube, QuantServe. Uh, QuantServe is another one that I see in a bunch of different places. So Slashdot is also pulling up a few places. And then one more. I need to go reset data on this again to make sure that this one shows up properly. And one place. EFF doesn't tell other people about you, just themselves. 
if you go through and have cookie blockers installed, when you have JavaScript blockers installed, you get much less data on, on, uh, uh, on Lightbeam. So when I first started testing with Lightbeam to, to figure out what I should show um, for the presentation, I was like, I can't believe nobody has any cookies. And I was, oh yeah, I blocked them all. <laughs> I know, I know Newegg says, go, why are they not showing up? Well, that's why. So if you have if you have JavaScript blockers in place, if you have cookie blockers in place, if you have ad blockers in place, other things that go through and block these third party sites, they won't be tracking you because they're not even getting anything from you. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about one of a couple of those specifically. So okay, first resources. Uh, so the Light, Lightbeam project homepage, um, and then there's also a TED talk from Gary Kovacs at the time that Lightbeam. So Lightbeam was first done as a beta product from within Mozilla. Uh, and it was called Collusion. And when they first announced it, Gary Kovacs uh, was the CEO of Mozilla, and he did a TED talk about it. Uh, it's a seven-minute talk. It's worth watch watching. Um, uh, uh, he, he talked about leaving it on all day and seeing the 300 different sites that had cookies on, based on him uh, and, uh, from his browsing for the day. He said, you know, a couple bites into breakfast, he already had 20 sites tracking him. Uh, uh, and then, of course, uh, he'd also sent his daughter off to go check something out, so they were also tracking her because they were, she was looking at one of the news articles he'd mentioned. Uh, so that was an interesting uh, piece to see. Uh, as I say, it used to be called Collusion. It's, it got redone uh, as a, uh, a, a more official add-on, and it's now called uh, Lightbeam. And then the third link is a report that came out recently that was talking about uh, third-party interception of cookies. So this is what happens if somebody else can intercept the cookies. Now, what Lightbeam is showing is, is how many third parties are collecting information about us. Uh, but what happens if you can actually sit be just at, you know, at your router, your home router, or your ISP's router, or something like that, somebody can sit there and collect all the cookies that are coming through. So CNN and, or not CNN, but uh, um, Comedy Central and Fox were connected via, um, uh, I don't remember, scorecard research, let's say. And so if you're sitting at scorecard research, you can track the person between both sites. Well, if I can collect all the cookies, I can collect all the things that a double click are getting and all the, all the cookies that Facebook and everything else are grabbing as well and grab information about you. Uh, not to mention, if I'm sitting there, I can grab unsecure websites as, as well. Can people sit in the middle and grab things off of routers like that? Yeah, it happens quite a bit. Uh, it, it's, in, back in the day, it used to happen a lot because that was one of the ways you got networking jobs. You, you broke into an ISP and they said, hey, you want to come work for us and fix those problems? Um, but also recently in Europe, they've been running into a problem where home routers by the millions are coming with zero day uh, exploits on them and being exploited. So that by the millions, people's home routers have sniffers on them looking at stuff and also attacking other people's systems. Um, so can somebody sit in the middle and, and, and look at what, you're, what traffic you're doing? Yes, they can. So the, the key is, do you want things to be unencrypted or do you want them to be encrypted? And then also, do you want third parties to be able to track you from site to site to site? And then uh, I want to talk about a couple of related add-ons. Uh, we have talked about a couple of these in, in other presentations. I'm just going to go cover them real quick. NoScript is a great, great add-on that turns off JavaScript and only allows the JavaScript that you allow. It does take a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of practice to get that because certain sites, for instance, Newegg, just doesn't really work at all unless you allow JavaScript. You can pull up products, but you can't get very much information. You can't get pricing information off of them unless you allow NoScript. So you kind of have to be, have to be a little bit diligent on that. Uh, NoScript was the second thing to have Do Not Track, the next one, Adblock Plus. It turns out was the first thing to add do not track to them. Um, uh, anyway, and, and that, that paper I referred to, uh, this, this third one on, on investigating third party, uh, there was very little difference between having do not track en enabled and not having do not track enabled um, because nobody's paying attention to it. But it's, it's a start. We can, start. we can go after the companies that are, are in sites that are not using that. Um, so anyway, no script will turn off JavaScript. Adblock Plus does a lot to block things that are ads or ads that you don't want to see. Um, Ghostery is a uh, great uh, 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 add-on. It'll get cookies. It also does flash cookies, I believe. Uh, and it does several other pieces of information and shows you how sites are, are, are connected and what it's blocking. Uh, and then Privacy Badger is a, is a add-on from the EFF, uh, which I brought up, the Electronic Frontier uh, Foundation, or uh, I always get the F, uh, those things backwards. But anyway. Um, so Privacy Badger is actually 
a fork of Adblock Plus, as it turns out, um, where they're going through and adding some features that Adblock Plus did not have by default. Uh, and then also there, there was a couple other things that they wanted to tweak. Um, and one of the things it's doing is blocking those connectivity things. So scorecard research, I'm pretty, pretty cer certain, without even looking, Privacy Badger would be blocking that because it's basically just a connect the dots type of site. And then cookie blockers such as Cookie Monster or Cookie Color, uh, again, like the blocking NoScript, you've got to be willing to do a little bit of work to get sites working because there are a lot of places that depend on it, especially anything where you need to log in. Most of those sites will require cookies. Um, but you can also set those, and I believe with NoScript as well, to say allow the site you're visiting to set JavaScript or cookies, but don't allow third-party uh, sites to do that. The problem is that many sites, especially for, for JavaScript, it is essentially third-party sites. So Newegg is pulling up JavaScript from five different Newegg domains. So they show up as third-party JavaScript even though they're from the primary site. No? Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.